Nuri Sinn Féin is committed to passing on relevant, up-to-date information on issues that are affecting our constituents. Today, Mickey Brady, MLA, will explain in simple terms the issue around what has become known as the bedroom tax. Please share and promote this short video on your social media networks. Mickey, the Tories have planned wide-ranging cuts on the most vulnerable in our society. Part of this is the so-called bedroom tax. In simple terms, could you explain what exactly this tax is? Well, the under-occupancy bedroom tax, as it's become known, is one of the most contentious parts of the Welfare Reform Bill. I would say at the outset, well, it's not about welfare reform. Reform is making something better and improving it. Uh, this so-called welfare reform bill is about imposing cuts, particularly on the most vulnerable in our society. The bedroom tax is about um, people being uh, sanctioned because, uh, according to government, their home, and I stress it's home, not house, is going to be um, under-occupied in the sense that they may have one or two bedrooms which they are not using. Now what's going to happen is if you have one bedroom that you're not using there will be you lose 14% of your housing benefit. If you have two bedrooms you will lose 25%. The difficulty that we have is we don't have the alternative housing for people to downsize to. All of this is predicated on what happens in the southeast of England. In London particularly where in some cases three bedroom terraced houses uh, where the rent was £2,000 per week and that was being paid to landlords. We do not have that problem in the sense that those kind of rents simply are not relevant to what happens here in the six counties. Who in our society is this going to affect the most then? It is estimated and I'm um, um, uh, quoting figures that we in the DSD committee have got from the Housing Act of approximately uh, 35,000 households or more will be affected by this um, cut. Um, it's going to affect right across the board. I have uh, gone across the north doing meetings about welfare reform uh, in all of the six counties and I have to say I'm getting the same message uh, in all of those areas that people in those areas are going to be affected. Historically the housing executive and the housing associations here in the north have built two and three and indeed four bedroom houses to accommodate families because uh, traditionally we have larger families, we have more close-knit communities, people want to live beside their relatives, etc. We simply do not have the housing stock for people to uh, get alternative accommodation. If the bedroom tax was to be introduced here tomorrow, they simply could not cope. And that is the reality. Recent figures that came out last week from the um, Chartered Institute of Housing and from housing associations would indicate and that their figures are that it would save 17 million that's the projected saving on uh, occupancy or under occupancy but the uh, projected cost of implementing it would be 21 million so there's already a deficit there of 4 million so you have to wonder at the illogic of introducing something like this. So what has Sinn Féin been doing in the Assembly then to challenge this? Well as far as Sinn Féin is concerned in terms of welfare reform in general and the welfare reform bill we have uh, consistently opposed it going back as far as 2007 when the initial stages were introduced we continue to consistently oppose it we see the um, bedroom tax as a draconian piece of legislation um, which fits in with the other draconian pieces of legislation contained within the Welfare Reform Bill and we will be vigorously opposing it. There's also the issue here in the North about um, housing which is uh, essentially segregated and, and in many cases based along sectarian lines it could be argued. I mean you have areas in uh, North Belfast as an example and that has been quoted to us um, where people could possibly downsize from say the New Lodge um, where there may be um, alternative housing available in uh, Tigers Bay for instance but in the context and the society in which we live that is simply not going to happen. What's going to happen for an example then uh, with a couple who has lived in a housing executive house for many years and one of them passes away would the sole survivor of the house be expected to allow a stranger to rent one of the rooms or something like that? Well instance? these changes will uh, affect people of working age um, also there are exemptions in terms of people with disability and particular um, types of, of disability etc and um, essentially what would happen there is if you had someone who the um, bedroom tax would apply to they could well be asked to downsize but 
The Housing Sector have, have given evidence to the DSD committee that they have been doing a pilot project in uh, the Craigavon Porter Down area. And what they have been doing is approaching people who may be affected by the bedroom tax to uh, take in lodgers. Now, that raises issues in terms of the income that is generated from that particular source, but also it raises questions about child protection and all of this, because essentially what they're saying is people can take uh, strangers into their homes. People are simply not going to uh, take people into their homes who they know nothing about. The other issue, of course, is if you are going to be um, affected and sanctioned by the bedroom tax and lose up to 25% of your housing benefit, people are then going to try and pay for that out of benefit, which is already subsistence level, which could then, of course, lead to um, more destitution. The Tory government in Britain, particularly led by the British media, have stigmatised and criminalised people in benefit, and that is absolutely wrong. They are basically accusing people of... Um, using and abusing a system which is very rigorously monitored. So people, the people who do abuse it are few and far between. In my experience and working with benefits for over 30 years, you'll always get any system that will people try and, and, and use it. But in the main and in the vast majority of people in benefit are there through no fault of their own and would, given the choice, would rather be at work. What avenues are there for people out there if they wish to object to this happening? Well, I think it's interesting that um, in Britain, particularly when the poll tax was introduced, you had widespread rioting. You had uh, people um, demonstrating on the streets against it. Uh, I think my own view is that because uh, the welfare reform bill as such does not necessarily affect uh, what is termed Middle England or the middle classes, and then you don't have that same reaction. And I go back to what I said earlier, the British media have criminalised and stigmatised people in benefit. We had the example last week of um, George uh, the Osborne, the Chancellor, talking about that Philpott case and more or less implying that this man did what he did or was convicted of what he did because he was in benefits. Absolute nonsense. So that was used, I think, and it was uh, abysmal and, and an absolutely detestable way that that was used by the Tories to try and justify what they're doing. Because welfare reform is not an attack on poverty, it's an attack on the poor. And I think we need to keep that in mind. Also an issue here in the North you know, regarding suitable accommodation you mentioned before. And by this I mean that there are very few one-bedroom dwellings in the Newry area. Is there an onus then on the executive to address this need for social housing? Uh, and for new bills in the New Armagh constituency? Yes, um, I actually attended a, a conference this morning in Belfast, uh, which was um, facilitated by the DSD committee, and we called together all the stakeholders um, who are, have an interest in housing because the Minister has put forward a new housing strategy. Now, that strategy contains many um, suggestions, but there's no vision. And they're talking about a sort of a five-year plan but we are talking about in any housing strategy that needs to be implemented, you're talking about th housing for the next 30 or 40 years. There needs to be a vision, there needs to be a coherence, there needs to be a cohesion. It has to be inclusive and it needs to be about housing which is based and uh, awarded on objective need, not on um, other um, areas of, of issue which may or may not be uh, relevant. It has to be an objective need. It has to provide housing for families. Housing isn't just about providing housing, it's about uh, building communities. So you need to have mixed tenure, you need to have um, two, three, four bedroom houses if necessary. You need to build communities and that's what housing's about. Paramount to all of this is the tenant and the person who's living in those houses, they need to be protected. There needs to be regulation of the private rental sector. There needs to be all sorts of issues brought into play.